Hello Pisces, welcome to a Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so happy to have you guys here. We're going to dive right in with your reading today. For those of you who have subscribed and comment and like my videos, I just want to say thank you, thank you so much. To those of you who are new to the channel, I would like to say welcome, welcome. These are general messages. Please keep that in mind. Take what resonates and only what resonates. For Pisces, please, Spirit, what does Pisces need to know right now? For Pisces, for Pisces. Pisces, look at that connection you have here. Um, wow, okay, guys. Um, the, yesterday I did a three month reading for you. I know a lot of you have watched the video and thank you for the tremendous amount of support on that video. Um, I really do appreciate it. There was such a clear trajectory in that video and there was so much confirmation. Um, you know, I definitely see a very important connection coming in here, Pisces. And I also feel that there are many important connections coming in here. These could be in through business. This could be as in a soul tribe, friend group. Um, you might even find them both in the same place. But I also feel you definitely have a soulmate. You have this resistance energy and this growth energy. And this feels very connected to, I feel, kind of the path you have in some ways been on maybe this year, but maybe even extending, you know, deeper into history than just this year. It feels like, you know, there was a lot of, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, you know, the, the, the thing about resistance is that it requires perseverance, right? And um, it's the nine of wands energy is both sort of the, the resistance, the guarded energy, the protective energy. And it's also that I'm not letting go, I'm not giving up energy, right? It's that wounded warrior energy. And with this resistance energy, it's like, I feel this energy of, you know, just continuously trying, just continuously, you know, going out there and, and giving it your best shot and then sort of being batted back down or, you know, maybe making some progress, but then no, getting put, pushed back. And this could be in a particular relationship. Um, where there was like possibly a push and pull dynamic or whether it was there was some inconsistency here or someone being kind of in and out. Um, so we're able to make progress, but then we're getting pushed back. There was a lot of growth through whatever this was. And it could have been just in life in general, like everything, it felt that way. Like, yeah, I get this advancement, but man, you know, it's not working out exactly the way that I thought or I hoped. This feels like a careful cultivation here by spirit. I feel as though it, it's sort of like the things that have not worked out for you have been pushing you toward what will work out for you. And it's almost like a, a sense of process of elimination. Like, I don't know if you guys had those combination locks like I did for your locker at school, but you know, it's like, it's, it's, it was called a master lock and it had like this dial on it. And you would go to the exact right number and then you would go backwards, you know, three times or something. And then you would go to that number and then, you know, and it, there was almost this like feel to it. It, it. it feels like that energy. I don't know how to say it, but you've been opening this lock the whole time. You've been entering this combination and it's been this back and forth sort of energy. I, I don't know how else to explain it because that's the strong visual that I'm getting. But it's like you you know you're on the last few numbers of the connection of the lock that is opening up this kind of really powerful energy. And 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 the powerful energy is you. It it is you. And it is through this growth that in this learning process of not giving up and of persisting and persevering and, you know, noticing the resistance, seeing the resistance and not giving up on the hope and the idea of flow and flow being there and being able to tap into it. Um, and there, it's almost like there were carefully curated lessons on your path or carefully curated, like 
directional <laughs> signs or synchronicities or even it's like this door is locked and closed and you can't get in it Pisces so choose another direction where are you going you know what I mean and it's all sort of directing you here and here it's like oh wow I don't have to figure out how to do you even see how this is this is kind of incredible do you see here you are and it's like I want this Okay, I, I've got to go down this path. I realize that. So I'm trying, but there's just all this resistance. Something keeps pushing me back, pushing me back. Do you see it here in the heart chakra almost in this picture? It, it, this is things that you have learned and things that have brought you to this point where you are exactly right now. It's almost that energy of like, it, it well this energy always exists right okay see rising up you just continuously rose up no matter what was put in front of you you just kept rising up pisces um it's almost this um the energy of you are exactly where you are meant to be and everything has happened and unfolded exactly as it was supposed to it's just that it all it took all of those things to get you here to where you are supposed to be now. And um, there may even be this recognition or this like, I feel this exhale and this come to a place of peace with all that has been. And maybe it's when you meet this person, maybe it's when this bridge appears, this connection. See, when something is meant to be, it will be. And it could be like even, you know, where you're finally able to make something work with someone that's been in and out, that's been, you know, resisting or has been, there's been difficulty all around the connection. It may even be that, but whatever it is, something very much that is meant to be and something that over the culmination of time and experience has led you to its path, to this, this opening, this bridge into this space and it's profound it's it's real good real real good guys come on this is what happens when i give them bones so that they'll be quiet my grand dog finishes her bone really fast and my dog keeps his so that he um, can make her jealous. And then they growl at each other. They're best friends, but that's how they do each other. All right, okay, wow. Pisces, you see um, these cards, I, I don't know if you, uh, watch me. Bhakti, Bhakti Francis, she is not coming anywhere near your bone. You do not growl. Um, these cards are not tarot cards or oracle cards. It's actually a game. Um, but they offer very unique insight a lot of the time. And after the reading yesterday where I see that you're, there's like major moves and major changes happening over the next three months. And the month of July feels like a place where a lot of things are aligning and coming together for you for what the climax that happens in August and September, um, kind of July is the setup. So I wanted to see, you know, what these would reveal. And you have weakened and it says, what has been draining your energy? What is making you feel is insecure and disempowered? What boundaries have been breached or compromised? What is making you lose your motivation? Um, you also have fog of war, unfamiliar terrain, unknown factors, unexplored areas. This feels Pisces like this resistance energy. And it kind of feels like this may be some of you because we're all on different timelines, right? Some of you may still kind of be in this energy of resistance and you may be really working your way through it. And this is telling me to, to tell you or like point out that a lot of times it's about noticing where the loss of energy is coming from. Noticing what is weakening you. 
Is it your thoughts about things? Is it the fact that you feel like you're trapped in this never ending cycle of resistance and that nothing is really working out for you and it hasn't for a while? And are you continuously telling yourself and this is really draining your energy? Is it that you are surrounded by people or even one significant person who may be narcissistic or have narcissistic traits or maybe gaslighting you or, you know, maybe kind of weakening your, um, your energy by really testing you all of the time, testing your patience, testing your ability to like stay in a place of peace and not be reactionary. Um, you know, what, where is this coming from? When we can pinpoint what is weakening us, we can identify the solution because the solution is to move away from whatever that is. So if it's our own thoughts, then you guys know I'm going to, I'm going to recommend Michael Singer here, um, and guided meditation, yoga nidra, you know, um, our, our, our mind is like a puppy. We have to train it. Um, if we leave our mind unchecked and we live unconsciously, our mind will completely own us and control us and will keep us so identified with what is happening in the material world and make us feel like everything is happening to us and that we really lack all power or control in the situation and that will take us further away from the en energy we need to tap into to create and manifest. Okay, and what I saw in July in the three month reading is that energy of manifestation. And not only did you have the new moon in Cancer in the July portion of your reading, but you also had the new moon in Leo in the, the um, August reading. So it feels very much like there's a lot of manifestation and a lot of creation and a lot of possibilities here. Um, and you know, that's a setup for the long term future. That's not just like, I ask for it in July, I get it in July. That's like, I'm asking for it in July and it's revealed to me, in, you know, December, January time. You know what I'm saying? So this is like, you know, you're even building on the future. And with the fog of war, it feels like, you know, if you are, fog typically is surrounding our thinking or our thoughts and it can be really highlighting a state of confusion where we don't really know or we don't really see our way through the situation or we don't we don't really you know we we just can't get to a place of clarity and when you are kind of mired in the fog and the mud it, it it's hard it everything is harder um i'm really getting here like get a good night's sleep i don't know what that's about but like i'm really getting like if you literally like were to surrender this energy like whatever it is even the confusion itself um but if you can pinpoint the source of where it's coming from or what you seem to be really confused about and give it to to your to your, the divine whomever that is for you um and really truly surrender it and just really even visualize yourself handing it off I sometimes do like a guided meditation that I've been doing so long, I don't even need it to be guided. I just sort of guide myself through it where I really imagine my angels coming towards me with baskets and flying towards me with their baskets in their hands. And then I put those things that I'm really worried or are really like dominating my mind that I can't seem to really let go of no matter what I tell myself. I put those things into their baskets. And I thank them for coming. I thank them for helping me. And I ask them to take those things that are troubling me with them and to handle those situations lovingly and to guide me with what I need to, to do to help. Um, and I watch them fly away and I have complete confidence and faith because I've done it so many times and I know that it works and I have total faith. Um, and you can either take my word for it or you can try it, but you really have to have the faith in it. Um, and then, you know, watch them and know that you have done what was in the highest and best of your own good. You've done everything you can do now. There's nothing else that you can do from your human place and except just fully release it and let the angels do what the angels do. And then um, really get a good night's sleep. You may even have some kind of dream that clears something up or that brings peace to your soul. 
Um, but that's what I'm getting. So take it as it resonates guys and you know, use your own methods. Not everything works for everyone. It's not supposed to, we're all very, very different people. And then you have this stealth mode card that says, how can you think outside of the box? How can you minimize risk and exposure? How can you escape and avoid conflict? This is actually getting me like just trying to open your mind to all the possibilities. Like what if it does go right? What if, you know, it all does work out? What if it is already working out? What if even what you consider to be abysmal and a failure and resistance and trouble and not what you want, um, what if that is it working out? What if there is something different and something better? It's shifting your mindset to allowing that what life comes at us on its terms. And the more we come to terms with that and not needing to control it and not needing it to be anything else other than what it is, the more at peace we are, the more at peace we are, the less confused we are and the more energy we have. And energy is a resource. Energy is something that we can turn into other things. We can turn it into love. We can turn it into abundance. We can turn it into a whole lot of things. But confusion steals that energy. It, 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 it requires us to put our energy toward figuring it out or solving that problem or you know, making ourselves feel better because we're interpreting something as a problem. And that is nothing but draining. There's no positivity in that at all. Now you have the ultimate move. What is the best part about you? Your authentic power, the undeniable truth of your soul, your ultimate source of light. What is the one move you can always count on for your success and to smash through your obstacles? I'm just gonna leave you with that question because that's the energy you're channeling. That's where you're going. And then you have health potion. What do you need to do to heal, recharge, and replenish your health? How can you practice self-care and self-love? How can you nurture your mind, body, and spirit? How can you take care of your energy? So this is take care of yourself first and then and, and think about what your true, special, unique traits and gifts are and invest in it, go for it. Use those things to move through this world. You have map, what helps you detail, capture, mark the landscapes you are going to explore. For some of you, this may be journaling, this may be meditation, this may be yoga. I mean, we all have different systems or different ways of navigating. Um, but uh, this is, and it says, how can you figure out the landmarks of a journey? You know, the, for a lot of you as Pisces, this is, you know, listening to your intuitive self. It can even be dreams. Um, I keep getting writing stuff down. So if you don't journal, you might want to start. Um, and actually, wow, that's crazy because I literally saw this quote this morning. And um, I, it was Louis L'Amour who wrote a lot of Western novels um, and it says start writing no matter what the water does not flow until the faucet is turned on so if you aren't really a writer or you don't really journal this may just be by the notebook get yourself a big pen and sit down and start going at it um, but I think there is something here where one of the things you know especially like if you're learning tarot or um, even if you're really going through an intense yoga process, a retreat, um, anything like that, journaling helps so much. You tend to be really present in the moment and you tend to see signs and synchronicities. And when you write them down and then you sort of live the life, you start to realize, oh, I saw this when this was about to happen. I saw this and it kind of meant this and oh my gosh, this was actually reassurance to me that everything was going to be okay. And it all sort of starts to make sense and all those things that you can figure out for yourself because we're all unique, um, that's going to help you tremendously through life. So it's never too late to start. It's always a good idea. Um, and I think I remember saying this in a reading recently, I think it was George Bernard Shaw who said, I write to find out how I feel. 
Um, and this may be important at this time. How you feel of feelings are our, our compass. They help guide us in the direction of our soul path and our journey. So Pisces, you're definitely, you're coming towards some kind of connection here. I feel like you're being guided. I feel like everything that has not worked out for you has not worked out for you for a very important reason. It's all leading you somewhere. And right now, it's just important for you to focus on what you're bringing to the table and make sure that you are your healthiest self. All right. Yeah, guys, look, you have power couple on the bottom of the deck. Okay, you have spiritual factors. Your love life is influenced by your spiritual path. Okay, I feel like that's all kind of linking up here. Um, worth the wait. Good things come when you allow yourself to wait for the divine timing. You're getting recognition, being recognized. Shed old skin. Oh my gosh, that came up so hardcore in, in the reading yesterday. And then you have this tongue. Your tongue is powerful ammunition speak life into your situation wow i will tell you intuitively i was guided to see this and i didn't say anything um you see here you know how you have the path here and the path here well in this growth it is the throat chakra that has the path and i've almost said to you guys um it may have been part of your growth was learning how to speak your truth or speak what you need or it's somehow connected to your throat chakra and our throat chakra doesn't just um talk about us talking it also talks about us listening um and so it is listening and speaking through your heart space through your most genuine self um all right so there you're to me that's sort of this confirmation of this intuitive feeling i had here why i don't say everything is because my readings are already like an hour long and you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know. All right. So Pisces, I mean, I just, I like, I, I feel like this is so obvious. Um, there was something that you went through to help you grow and expand, to be able to be where you need to be and who you need to be to show up for someone who's showing up for you. This is something that's clearly very meant to be. It is a power couple. It is something that's worth the wait. There are spiritual factors involved in the connection. Um, and, you know, for some of you, you may have inspired a person to shed their old skin and they may finally be showing up to the rodeo um, and ready for this relationship. And they may even be saying to you, you know, Pisces, without you, I couldn't have done this. I, I never would have gone through the growth process I went through. I wouldn't have even thought about maybe even spiritual things or I wouldn't have even thought about some of these things. I do feel that energy here kind of significantly. Um, but for, I think the majority of you, I do feel like it is a new person. All right. Let's dive into some angel tarot. Pisces, please, Spirit, what can you show us? What does Pisces need to know about this situation? What are you trying to get through here? Pisces, ay, 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 You, oh my gosh, you guys, seriously, I was talking so much about the Nine of Wands, and then there it is. Wow, holy moly. Um, man, oh man, Pisces. So, you know, you have this four of water and the nine of wands. And this to me is like, either it's this feeling of I keep getting rejected. I keep getting disappointed. Life keeps letting me down. Um, I, I like my expectations content are continuously unmet. Um, but I just don't give up. I keep persevering. This is that energy of resistance that it's covering, you know, that we were talking about in the Oracle cards. And I feel like, you know, there's even this feeling with this angel right over her back that like you were never alone. It was never, you know, just spirit turning its back on you or unanswered prayers or anything. It was 
You see how these wands are all like pushing her in this direction? That's how it feels. It feels like it was all redirection. It feels like it was all putting you exactly neatly where you needed to be. You have the hangman and the death card and these are back to back uh, in the major arcana is the 12 and the 13 here, which doesn't really happen a lot in tarot card readings, and it, but it's definitely progress in the overall fool's journey of our life, right? Um, and this is pretty pivotal. How we lead into the death through the hangman energy is that you know how people talk about well when you ascend or when you have this big spiritual awakening or you know when you when you have some level of enlightenment okay like you learn something even through a process of you know the four of water and the nine of wands even let's say because that's what it appears to be here um you know you can't you you evolve you change you go through a, a transformational process to where you now have clarity, you now have an understanding of something you didn't understand before. And now it's a different experience to live life because probably your perspective changed, right? And so once that perspective changes, you have, you are like, you go through, it's like the way you see life, the way you are, navigating the way you're assimilating the way you're connecting the way you are the way you do everything has this new perspective and it's like things that maybe you would have tolerated or accepted you're like absolutely not no way you know i'm i i i, I know what that is i have enlightenment on that that never works out that's never okay that's never good maybe you were in a relationship with a narcissist and now you're like no 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 um, I'm never going to do that again. I'm not looking back. I'm not going in that direction. Well, that spiritual awakening leads to this rebirthing process. And you can see in this release card, he is, you know, setting free the Phoenix, the one who rises, you know, out of the ashes, the one who allows himself to be transformed by the new knowledge, by the new perspective, by that new piece of clarity. The one who says, ah, okay, I, I'm not resisting this lesson. I'm not resisting this information. I am accepting it. I am understanding, you know, whether it's just that life isn't fair, whether it's that, you know, you cannot connect with people like that because it's just going to disappoint you time after time after time. Whether it's, you know, I'm not going to put expectations on life because every time I do, it prevents me from accepting life on its terms and being grateful for the beauty of what is instead of, you know, feeling the disappointment and rejection of what was not. Um, whatever it is, and it can be many things. It can be, I'm just having this moment of looking back on the past and maybe it is a significant relationship or maybe it's my whole life story. Maybe it started with that significant relationship and needing to come to a place of peace with it and realizing that the seeds of that relationship were actually planted in my own childhood wounding. You see what I'm saying? And then, but it with the Phoenix, it is a complete rebirth. It is the ability to rise beyond any circumstances that you have, that have burdened you or plagued you or prevented you from living in your highest and best ever. Um, so a lot of you asked for the Muji guided meditation yesterday, um, and it's M O O J I. Um, I, I, I always do try to spell the people's names and I must not have yesterday. Um, but that guided meditation will, it can be, it can give you hangman moments for sure. Um, and so can all of his teachings really. And I don't talk about him a lot cause I do feel like he's kind of advanced. Um, or it's not like, it would be like diving into the deep end instead of like kind of nicely walking into the shallow end. He's not someone who 
makes his words super accessible. Like, you know, I feel like Michael Singer really is like trying to speak to everyone. I feel like Tara Brock is, is trying to speak to everyone. She's trying to be relatable to everyone, no matter where you are in your spiritual journey. You can listen to it and get something from it. With Muji, I feel like it's diving into the deep end, but I, I think he's, I mean, he's been transformative for me. There are a lot of Muji guided meditations that are amazing. But that's the one that I was referring to yesterday. Um, again, if you're interested, let me know. Leave a comment and I'll try to put a link to at least one of his things in um, uh, in a comment. Okay, so you have the Two of Fire here on the bottom of the deck. And this is a significant delineation in your life. This is, there's a before and there's an after. This moment right here. Now. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer who I used to be. I have transformed and I am rising above what my previous circumstances were that held me in this space. I have grown. I'm no longer seeing things the same way. And now the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle, not only me, but the way I'm interpreting what is happening is changing. I may have seen life happening to me all the time here. And now I understand it is happening for me very different energy. Um, and this is representational of it. And every choice you will make from this point forward is going to reflect this new energy. All right, I am going to clarify. I do also see like masculine and feminine and then two beings here. I, I feel this could be something that if you have not met your person yet, this could be something that is also taking place for them in their life. Also, if if you do know this person and you have been through a long path with them where things haven't necessarily worked out, um, this could be where it meets up. The point in which it meets up is is, you know, now or soon. Damn, I mean, seriously, I just love tarot, you guys. I can't help it. Um, I would call this a little miracle, right? Um, anytime the tarot really, really, truly confirms what we are saying and what we're talking about, it's like, you know, I, 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 I was looking for an electric blanket for my mother-in-law last year in the wintertime. She was cold and I think her circulation was kind of failing her and she loves the warmth of like an electric blanket and they have like throw blankets and I thought that would be so much more manageable for her. And so I was looking, I said to my husband, I'm going to find your mom an electric throw blanket and we'll send it to her for Christmas. And he was like, oh yeah, I got on my phone and in my Instagram feed, was it Instagram? I don't know. One of my feeds, it was like electric blanket option after electric blanket option. It was like my phone heard me talking to my husband and saying that to him because I live in Florida. I'm not regularly shopping for electric blankets. I don't think I'm the target audience for an electric blanket. Well, this is what has happened here in the tarot is like that. It's like I'm saying it to you and tarot is confirming it. To me, there are no coincidences. That's a synchronicity. That's a confirmation. But you can take it however you want. But for me, I call those little miracles and I say thank you, spirit. Um, this is showing you the obstacles were the way. <laughs> the obstacle is the way. Um, it, these things that did not work out for you, these things that left you disappointed, these things that, you know, you felt like, why am I always in this situation where I just have to survive it, or I just have to get through it, or I just have to overcome it, or I have to persevere it. I have to, you know, it's just like, why am I being met with such resistance to my path, to my plan, to what I want? Um, well, it, it was carefully cultivating your discernment. It was carefully cultivating your ability to almost stretch beyond your own energy, right? This is a card of Libra, a cardinal air sign. You're a mutable water sign. You are the queen of cups, naturally. You are someone who innately has a connection to your emotion and can tap into that to make decisions and to be led. But sometimes that, that causes greater pain, you know, um, especially because you're, you're, 
you're leading with your heart space and your heart space is the most tender and vulnerable spot we have. When we are in the energy of the queen of swords, we are leading with logic, with analysis. We're leading with clarity, being our top priority. If something confuses me, that's not for me. Um, you know, if, if someone's going to make me question how they feel about me or how, whether I'm worth it or something, a queen of swords is going to cut that off. A queen of swords is not going to deal with that. A queen of cups is going to seek empathy and they're going to try to understand it and they're going to get deeper and deeper and deeper enmeshed and embroiled in it. With the um, two of swords here, you can see the problem is this confusion. The problem is, and, and what happens when, this is also, by the way, a card of Libra. Some of you may be dealing with a Libra. Some of you may have strong Libra traits. Um, I'm a Libra, lots of Libra. Um, but you have, um, you, you know, when, when you get in the two of swords, it's because it's like you're almost shutting down intentionally and on purpose to sort of protect yourself. It's kind of that energy of, I just don't want it to get any worse. So, um, I, I, and none of it makes any sense to me. And so I'm not looking to, I'm not looking for any place to put my heart. I, I recognize that that is what probably led to the confusion. And I'm not, I'm not looking for the answers outside. I'm just, I have to sit with my own energy and I just have to sit here and not go anywhere and not do anything until it makes sense to me. And that is the energy that you transmuted into the queen of swords, into a very powerful, discerning, clear thinking person who has more than one tool to lead with. You know, if you want access to my heart, now you have to get through by proving to me something, by showing me something, by showing up in a certain energy. I am a good judge of character. I, I'm not only just intuitive, but because when you lead with your heart, especially when it comes to people, you may see someone is messed up. You may see someone is wounded and they have not healed. But your inclination when you lead with your heart is to fix them, is to help them, is to love them. When you are leading with the queen of swords, you are like, oh, I see you have some work to do. You have chosen not to do it. <laughs> Period. You know what I mean? You don't, you, you understand that that's their journey and that you're meeting them at some point in the journey and you can pray, you can, you can, you know, show them to a source, but you cannot heal them. You cannot, that's a choice that that person has to make on their own. This came up in the three month reading yesterday too. So the two of swords was a powerful energy, that sense of confusion, that fog of war, that was a very important energy for you. You were able to sit with that energy until you emerged, until you transmuted it into a superpower. Um, I hope that makes some sense because we see major progress here in the fool's journey. Wow. Yep. You were so see in this can easily be where you were dealing with someone who was very wounded. Um, and yeah, look at this. Oh my gosh, you guys, spirit is just, ooh, we are in harmony today. Um, it feels so good. Okay. I'm freaking out also. Um, well not freaking out, but kind of you, you have the hangman, the death card and temperance. This is 12, 13 and 14 in the major arcana. I honestly, I don't think this has ever happened to me in a reading before ever. Um, that is, I, I just don't even know what to say, but Pisces, if you are wondering, am I making any progress? Am I getting anywhere? Is this real? Is this really helping? Is this really working? It is, it is. And it is also reminding you that there is, there is divine intelligence happening all the time in the chaos. Remember, um, the other day, oh my gosh. You guys, I just looked to see if that yellow flower was still there. If you watched that reading where I was talking about this yellow flower that like popped up between the bushes and I had no idea how it was growing. I have two hibiscus bushes outside my office and they, they, they really come together where you almost can't tell where one ends and the other begins. There's this yellow flower popping up through it. It, it was growing up and it bloomed the other day, like two days ago. 
Well, it's gotten taller and now the stem goes like this so that it can get the light. It just keeps adjusting. It just keeps, it's, it's just, it's like, I, like, I don't even, I can't, it's like, I'm gonna draw it. It goes like this. It's growing up like this. Look at this amazing drawing. That's what it's doing. It has just made adjustment after adjustment after adjustment. Resistance. It, it, it was pushing it in a direction. The light, it has to have the light. And this is what how it has had to grow in order for it to get the light. That is mother nature. That is how mother nature works. That's how the universe works. That flower was, it, it's, divi it's, it's divine intelligence in the chaos. That's how we respond and still thrive and still succeed and still live. And that's what's happening here. You're growing Pisces. Um, you're evolving, you're changing, you're making necessary adjustments that are leading you to this space where you're about to blossom and bloom and shine. Um, okay. Anyway, I don't know what is going on here. Okay. So you have the eight of cups here, which is right. Okay. Anything that is not satisfying me, anything that is not F making me better, stronger, wiser, happier, f feeling fulfilled. It's like, I cannot keep giving my energy to it. I just can't. I have to take that energy and I have to put it toward myself. I have to invest in myself. I have to invest in my own growth. I have to get away from what is confusing me and where this resistance is coming from. And I have to stop using all my energy to fight against, against it, but I have to listen to it instead. And I have to say, okay, that's, that, that's not gonna work. Me continuously doing this isn't working. And so maybe if I give it space, we'll see what happens. I'm not extinguishing the fire. I'm not doing anything that is like permanently dismantling this. I am just letting it be. I'm giving it space. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it become what it needs to become. And I am listening to the guidance of the universe. I'm not clinging. I'm not forcing. I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm listening. Throat chakra. Um, temperance. <laughs> So you've had some kind of transformational experience where you have risen above past circumstances that were keeping you stuck and stagnant in a place where you were, where you were giving into the confusion. You were going, but why isn't this working? But why isn't this working? Instead of going, oh, I can see clearly it's not working. This isn't meant for me, or at least it's not meant for me at this time. I think I'll redirect my energy, right? I'll walk away from this. I'll cut it off. I will accept this. I will not continue to put my heart out there and, and get it beat up and, and sit in this energy of rejection and disappointment. And I will just accept that, okay, this path is not opening. I have tried very hard. I have given it my best. It is not opening. I will listen. I will heed it. I will see the clarity in it and I will, I will act upon it. So we've done that. And through that process, we have learned something major. And we have changed and we have transformed. And now after with temperance, this is where we are ready for this. That's coming. This is the energy of rebalancing, grounding, centering, healing, um, really allowing that transformation to take deep root within us and be the medicine that heals the wounds within us that were causing us to continuously try to, to, to cling, to force, to make something work that clearly wasn't working and left us in a constant state of confusion and non-growth. When, when we accept life as it is and when we say, oh, okay, I have to bend like this and instead of growing straight and tall, I have to bend like this and move over here in order to get the light now. All right. 
I'll do that. You know, we when we keep battering ourselves against the brick wall going, why, I, why isn't this opening? I want this to open. Why isn't this working out for me? Why is it working out for everyone around me, but it's not working out for me? You know, da 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 telling ourselves all these things. Those prevent our growth because we're just sitting there going, no, but I need this, but I want this, but da 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 da. It, it prevents us from moving beyond that place. When we say, oh, okay, I hear the door is not opening. It must not be opening for a reason. Let me go this way. That's when we grow. That's when the transformation takes place. And that's when we have the opportunity to say, ah, there's a different way. And there's a reason why all these things happen. And now that I know that, and I've experienced that, I can come to a place of peace with the things that didn't work out or the things that the doors that didn't open. Page of Pentacles, we're learning an important spiritual lesson about it. There were even powerful cards exposed when I tried to move the deck. Oh my gosh, look at the major arcana of Pisces. Lord have mercy. Um, wow. You have the fool, the magician, and the star card. And you know, Pisces, there may have been something that you were dreaming up or manifesting when you first started this path. You know, it may have been a real loving, long lasting relationship you know, and you came into contact with someone who was only capable of giving you eight cups and not 10 and not 10 pentacles, but just the eight cups. And, you know, this may be a return to ground zero with the dream of, okay, you know what? <laughs> I tried, I did my best. It didn't, it didn't manifest into what I was hoping or what I wanted. I'm starting at I'm going back to that original dream, that original manifestation, the thing that set me on this journey in the first place, that deep desire to love and be loved, to find connection, to find someone. And I'm not going to be stopped. I'm not going to be made stuck. I am not going to be any of those things. I am going to go back to the beginning of my, to, to what I originally wanted with my new perspective and with my healing, healed, regrounded, recentered, rebalanced self. And I'm gonna start the journey again in this energy, knowing that because I have changed, the outcome will change. And it may be with a past person, it may be with someone new, brand new, um, but something has changed here. Something dramatic and profound has changed within you. And with the star card and the wheel of fortune, this is all about divine timing. And this timing is emerging. It is happening. This absolutely 100% showed up in a very similar way in the three month reading yesterday. You could feel it just the same way I can feel it right here. There, so, it's almost like, yeah, like I just got luck and right timing again. Remember how that kept coming up in a reading or maybe even two or three readings? That is what's happening here. It's like luck is on your side. The fate is on your side. The destiny is on your side. The angels are on your side. The universe is turning in your favor here, Pisces. It's like everything is kind of aligning and it is going to become very clear. And also Pisces with this Empress energy, this is really talking about um, how you are the limitless creator. You are really manufacturing this whole situation for yourself. You are, you are manifesting it. You are bringing it into being. You are alchemizing it. You are, you are a limitless being and you're finally tapping into that. You're finally coming to the place where you're connected to flow. And I feel like, yeah, that was a major theme, an overarching theme of the reading yesterday for the next three months. 
um, you know, I, I almost kind of like want to go back and watch yesterday's reading after having this reading because it almost feels like this reading is almost like clarification in some ways for that one. Um, but you have this night of air energy and it says intellectual, determined, and motivated. Pisces, with the magician and the dreamer here, you you are you have been made new. And though your dream, your goal, your intention, your manif what you are manifesting may be the same as it once was, you are not the same as you once were. You have changed and you are moving in a different energy and it, it's kind of like nothing can stop you night of air you know he moves obstacle free he's out running all the obstacles and he may not have a super long-term plan or a super long-term vision like he may not be it's going to be this person and it's going to happen like this da, da 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 but he's definitely open to what happens out there he just knows he's got to act I mean, Pisces, Ten of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, Six of Wands, Three of Cups, you know, I mean, this is something, this is the beginning of something that can potentially be very long lasting. You have the Six of Wands and you have the recognition. I feel like this is someone, it can be someone from your past, especially with the Three of Cups there, that is having a reconciliation with you that's coming to you and saying, Pisces, none of this would have been possible without this. And I could never have learned what I needed to learn to be ready to show up for something long term and serious if it hadn't been for you. And I probably wouldn't have done it for anyone but you. Um, it, it, you are, the world is coming into harmony with you is how it feels, Pisces, more so than you are coming into harmony with it. Um, I, you have the Nine of Cups, Pisces. This happens and this comes when you feel a sense of emotional contentment all on your own. When your cup runneth over you with you. And, um, you know, if you're not in this energy of the Nine of Cups now, keep focusing on gratitude. Gratitude for every experience that has led you to where you are now. Trusting in the divine plan, the divine intelligence that exists within the chaos, the seeming chaos of it all, the divine order. Um, I honestly think I'm going to leave that there. I just, I don't know what else I could say. You're coming into alignment with a person here, Pisces, a major, major, major person. And, um, I feel like this has been a long time in the making. I feel like a lot of what has been happening for you leading up to this has been redirection to this space, to this time. Um, and definitely with the Wheel of Fortune and the Star card energy, time is upon you. Time is now. Time is happening soon. You know, this isn't like, uh, maybe a year from now. No, this is like, it, it, it's all coming together. And it will happen as it at, as soon as it comes together. As soon as all the pieces and parts are in place, it will happen. It will open up for you. And it, it has been a journey of healing. It had the, the journey of redirection. You know, taking rejection time after time after time or taking something that isn't what we have wanted and remaining true to the process of life, you know, um, it is yesterday, I think in the three month reading, I, I read a quote, a Lao Tzu quote about water and how water is so soft and yet it is strong enough to carve the earth. And, you know, it, it, it's like that with you, Pisces, you, you are this soft, loving, intuitive, receptive, mutable water sign who's capable of taking the shape of any vessel that it's in but you are mighty you are strong you have the power to carve the earth you have the power to change fixed immovable cardinal sure they know what the the thing is you you have that power and it may happen a little bit at a time 
over the course of, of time, right? And it may not always be straight. It may take many curves, but it will always get to the ocean. It will always reach that state of flow. It just takes that determination and the listening to the intuition of go this way, go that way, do this, do that. This door is not closing as punishment. This door is not closing because you are not worthy. This door is closing because the path is much better that way. It's happening for you, not to you. All right, let's get some message cards here, Pisces. You are, if you're dealing with a water sign, you're getting forgiveness. Forgiving yourself or another will help you move forward. You are getting decision. It's time to decide about this relationship. You're getting boundaries. Firm boundaries are needed now. You are getting, I wonder how you feel. If you are dealing with a fire sign, you are getting different pages. You and this person don't share the same vision. This may be part of the problem that, you know, existed that created this situation. I can't reach out. I can be myself with you. I miss being with you. Support. Lean on your inner circle during this time. If you are dealing with an earth sign, I watch your social media. I don't... I don't want to know. I see life differently now. I am waiting patiently. And then you have strictly sexual. This connection is passionate but not enduring. It may have started off with a tremendous amount of physical chemistry. Okay. I, if you're dealing with an air sign, I won't let you down. You didn't see my tears. I love you. I know I messed everything up. I'm grateful for the spiritual lesson. And I compare others to you. Pisces, something really beautiful is just around the river bend. <laughs> I feel so cheesy saying that, but it came to me, so I'm letting you have it. All right, guys, um, this is what I have for you. I um, really, gosh, I just feel really like so connected to this reading and to this energy that you guys have had for the like last two days especially very strongly and just like the beautiful way that spirit is even revealing it through the cards. Anyway, um, I thank you all for joining me. I'm sending you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.